Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be testing out the Gucci Natural Finish Foundation. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy, okay? Thank you. Oh, my little jumping giblets, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you are having a spectacular day so far. I myself am doing wonderful. The sun is shining. It's very cold outside, but I can look at the sun from inside. I will say, though, I am pretty stoked to test this out. I am a little bit late to this little shindig because I did not want to order this straight from Gucci. A voice from my loins told me that I should wait until this hits four because they have a very good return policy. And a lot of times these higher priced items honestly aren't that good, especially with foundations. Like 12 out of 10 times you are paying for the name and it's just some generic ass formula that really isn't anything special. Which I call that shit because if we hop over to the C4How website, right now this is just at 3 out of 5 stars. And for that 3 star product, you are paying almost $70. This is a $68 foundation, like no. If we got maybe like 2 fluid ounces, then that would make sense, but this is the standard 1 ounce. So it's not like we're getting a lot of product to justify that price, we are literally paying for the name Gucci, which I will say their fragrance Gucci Guilty gets me the fuck off. Oh my god, it's so delicious. Let's quick take a little peeky poo at the lowest and the highest reviews. Okay, so there's very few five star reviews for this. A majority of these are three and four stars with a lot of them being one stars too. So maybe let's read a couple of the ones first and they say it looks awful. They actually posted a picture and their skin looks very pilly and ashy and just weird. This person says what a waste of $70. I threw it right in the trash. Why the fuck? didn't you return it? This is definitely not a good foundation for people with even just slightly dry skin. Oh god, that's me. None of the colors match my skin tone. Oh my god, there are seven whole pages of these one stars. Let's go to the three stars because there's a lot of those. Lots of separation and this clung to any and all texture and dry spots on my skin. It has terrible buildup around my nose. I did notice that the first ingredient of this is water, but then the second ingredient is silicone. So I don't know, do you use a water-based primer or a silicone-based primer? A majority of the people that reviewed these got them in like a little sample pack card, which for me at least, those do not include enough shit in it to actually spread on my entire face. So I don't know how trustworthy a lot of these are. Sample size was too small. It was okay. I didn't receive enough to even cover the rest of my face. These reviews are not helpful. This person suggests you apply it with a damp sponge or a brush. It has a beautiful finish that you can either set with powder or just leave it. Well, this person actually has a picture of them showing the fucking bottle, so at least I know they bought it, but they said it's not heavy or splotchy. This person suggests using a sponge or over a brush. Okay, so we can definitely apply this with a little sponge. The website says this is a natural finish liquid foundation developed for normal combo and oily skin types that provides a flawless complexion and can be worn in multiple layers. It has medium coverage with a natural finish and I call bullshit on this being for every kind of skin like there really is no foundation that actually works for everyone that is total marketing bullshit. But this is free of parabens, formaldehyde, sulfates, SLS, SLES, and triclosan. And of course it is vegan and cruelty free and they do also have have quite a few shades to choose from. At least on the Sephora website, there's like 40 of them. I ended up ordering the shade 150C, which is fair with cool undertones, and this might actually be okay. It does look a little grayish in the bottle though, but who knows, this might just be the ticket. So let's go ahead and hop into wearing this, shall we? All right, to prime my face, I really don't know what to use, so I'm gonna go in with this Laura Mercier Hydrating Foundation Primer, and I guess if these little bitches don't play nicely together, I'll try a different primer. Let's give this a good little shake. I do remember somebody saying, that this is very heavily fragranced, which I am not a fan of, and people with sensitive skin. You okay, Ron? Sorry, my wiener dog is having a crap attack. You okay, baby? He's good. He just needs attention. But for people with sensitive skin who might be acne prone, fragrance is not a good friend of yours. But we'll see how this is. The packaging is very, very beautiful. Honestly, this looks worth the price, which is very rare. Like, sometimes we'll pay like $80, and the packaging will be acrylic, just really fucking cheap. But this is beautiful. It's nice frosted glass and it has a great cap on it. <gasps> it's gold. That is bougie. Damn, this is just too fucking fancy for my taste. I usually mix dirt with Crisco and smear that on my face for foundation, so this is just something new entirely. Well, let's take a few little, uh, squirties. Uh, uh, oh, ooh. <gasps> mm. Oh, it is extremely perfumey. It smells more like a sunscreen, though. Oh, I actually really like the way that smells, but it's quite odd for a foundation. Like, I don't understand why there needs to be a smell to your foundation, but this 
does smell very feminine and flowery and light, but also very elderly at the same time. I really don't dislike that. We'll see how it is once it's actually on my face, but it does have a nice kind of like medium consistency. It's not too watery. It's not too thick. And though I do love beating my face with things that are thick, I actually prefer these kinds of consistencies because I can spread them out thinner. So here is some of that. Here we go. Oh my goodness, this color. <gasps> oh, it actually somehow still looks yellow on me. Although on camera, I think it looks fine. It might be the slightest bit too light for me, but it's really not too bad. Let me tap this in before we pull up the match meter I may have applied a little bit too much to this side. We'll go in a bit more sparingly for the other side, but it has great coverage. Oh, wow. That is a very strong smell. Mmm. Oh, but I really like that smell. What does this smell like? Orchids? No, some kind of flower, and I'm digging it. Oh god, but this dries down very, very quickly on the skin. Fuck, I need to not talk. Okay, so this is doing that weird pilly thing on my skin. Let's get a little bit closer. As far as foundations have gone lately, this is probably one of the better looking ones, but does it look awesome? Not really. It is really catching in my dry areas immediately around my nose and kind of on my forehead there. Don't know if you can see that, but trust, it's there. However, on the rest my face this does look pretty decent because it is kind of on the matte dry side it is really accentuating all of the texture that I have around this area and it is kind of immediately setting into my fine lines that I have on my forehead and it's not just accentuating them it's like gathering there and so if I were to like go like that you can just see like where it catches like I need to tap that out so immediately I can tell that if you have more mature skin or if you have fine lines or wrinkles of any sort or dry skin this probably isn't going to be a good product for you you. The coverage does seem pretty decent. The color is okay. It's just more so the finish that isn't quite getting my rocks off. But if you have super hydrated skin, I think this probably would look pretty good. It's just that my dry patches are fucking me over again. On the other side, I think I'm gonna try using a brush. This is Sabrina by Hank and Henry. There's not much left on my hand. So let me start with that little bit and see how far we can spread it. Let me quick start where my driest spot is to see if it instantly catches. Okay, you know what? I did spread it out very, very thin just along here, but that actually might look a little bit better. Almost used as like a BB cream. Let me just apply it to the rest of my face and see how we end up. Ah, shit, it's doing it again where it looks really, really good, but then once it dries down, which is kind of a very quick process, it starts to catch everywhere that's dry. I don't know if you can really tell, but this side with the sponge, my wrinkles on my forehead are just really fucking prominent. But on this side with the brush, they're not as prominent, but slowly they're starting to creep through. So really, I don't know that there's that huge of a difference between the application methods. You know what? I kind of wonder if I should use a different primer with this because it's doing a weird pilly thing around my nose. Like the longer that it's on, it's starting to separate and look kind of funky. It's like when you add vinegar to cottage cheese. So I'm just gonna wipe this off with a makeup eraser that has only water on it. And I think I'm gonna go in with my Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. All right, primer is on. Let's try this again. And kind of warm the product up on the back of my hand and here we go. Um, I can't quite tell you yet because because initially it looks fucking amazing. So let me just take it on this half my face to start with. Oh no, I even applied a little bit less to this side, but it still looks really, really dry and it's catching in my dry spots the moment that this dries down. Oh, nastiness. I don't know if you can see like around there, hopefully it's not blown out and like overexposed, but this really does not look cute. Like on my forehead, it just looks gross everywhere. I'm just beyond confused as to why this looks so bad. I mean, I'm not crazy. Like, you can see all that that's happening, right? Let's see how fucking close we can get. See? Yes? No? Mm. However, I do still want to do a wear time test with this, though. Let me apply it to the other side. I don't at all think that this is the worst foundation we've tried on here, but for this price point, it definitely isn't good. I think the best part about it, honestly, is the fragrance, which I personally probably would get very tired of very quickly. Hopefully it doesn't linger around for too long. And I do kind of feel obligated to tell you that this does not play nicely in the facial hair like at first it does but then the moment you touch it and kind of disrupt it it just turns pilly it kind of rubs around in there and there are a lot of foundations that actually do play very nicely with facial hair and this just is not one of them I'm gonna be real I kind of don't want to do a full makeup look today like
like with contour and concealer. Because a lot of times it seems like the concealer saves the foundation. And if people are going to be paying this much for this foundation, I don't want anything to have to save it. So I think I'm actually just going to chill around the house like this today. I really don't know if you can see exactly what I see, but it's not the worst thing in the world ever. And I think if you did have more moisturized, hydrated skin and you just wanted a light kind of coverage like this, I think you probably would like it. But yes, here we have it. I'm going to do a wear time test with this. I will see you at the end of the day in just a second. All right, my loves, we are back. It is the end of the day and I really haven't done much, so I don't think this looks that different. However, it does look slightly different. And I actually think it looks better now that it's sit on my skin. After like a half an hour, I looked in the mirror and I was like, okay, she's getting it. So under normal everyday average lighting, this actually does look really, really pretty until you're like an eyeball length away, which I'm finding is very common for me with a lot of foundations lately. Not all of them, but a majority of them. They just kind of look like they're sitting on top of my skin, kind of powdery, kind of pilly, kind of dry, just like this one. But with this one, this area that I had texture in, I do still have a little bit of texture, but it's not as pilly. I think my oils are starting to come through and I actually think it looks pretty nice. Like it is still catching in my little forehead wrinkles, which I don't love because it's really making them super pronounced. But everywhere else on my face, I think this actually looks pretty decent. Like it's not a fuck ton of coverage. It's just like a light dusting, but I kind of love the way this looks. Do I think it's worth the price? No, not at all. I mean, this to me looks like a drugstore foundation that I could get at Ulta. But as far as the high end products go that are normally kind of shitty, this actually isn't too shitty. Like we've tested an ass ton of high end foundations on this channel. And this one probably is one of my favorites so far, but only if your skin is already kind of smooth, you don't have a lot of texture, you don't have a lot of dryness, which if your skin is basically already flawless, you could get a much cheaper foundation. So do I think this foundation is terrible initially kind of, and depending on who you are, yes, but overall, not really, but not for a goddamn second will you hear that I actually recommend this because it is so fucking expensive. Like I almost want to mix this with a facial oil or something because it does feel like it's staying pretty nicely and my little forehead wrinkles might not have caught so much if I had immediately set it, but it was almost like the moment that I put this on my skin, it just clung to those little wrinklets. Like this is such a fast drying product that I don't even have time to go in and correct and like rub out everything. <laughs> Giggity. So if this foundation ever goes on sale or if this is in your price range, I do suggest you try it because you might end up really liking it. But if your skin is similar to mine where it's kind of dry, it's not the smoothest shit ever, you might not love this. I think this has me curious about their future launches. Like I definitely want to try more of their foundations, but this one didn't really sell me. However, we have done much worse. Like from this far away, I think this actually looks pretty good. So yeah, you can kind of see how this looks and make your own kind of judgment. I do think though, if I had used a hydrating concealer, that probably would have really, really saved this. I think there's ways that even a dry person could make this work, but I also think that there's cheaper foundations that do look just as good, if not better, that you could also make work for you. So unless you want the name Gucci stamped on something, then there really isn't any need for this. But is it a terrible foundation? No, I'm pleasantly surprised. Cool. Oh, fuck me. We forgot the matchometer. Hold on. Let's pull that baby up. This is not bad at all. I would say this is maybe like an eight. What do you think? Especially having applied it somewhat on the sheer side, it's not too shabby. Anyways, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for being here. I love having you. And if you'd like to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us over on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early. You get Patreon only content. Plus best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplix.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplix.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.